Hi everyone! In this video I'll teach you how to properly make the content bleed to either of the viewport sides. I believe you already seen images stuck to the left or the right hand side of the browser window, while the opposite side remains within the page boundaries. So you're gonna learn how to intentionally break out any side of the content area to achieve that design goal in Elementor. You're gonna need Elementor Pro, the only requirement is steroids for Elementor add-on that is completely free. The training file download link can be found in the description of this video and is free for everyone as well. But even the smallest donation will keep this channel alive. Ok, if your website content is already full width, then there's nothing to be considered as a breakout, so this tutorial makes sense for the box content or box design only. First of all, let me briefly explain the major problem when it comes to the content breakout in Elementor. By the default, Elementor Editor content width is 1140 pixels and the content itself is centered, as you already know. But if you want to make the section column hit the left or the right hand side of the browser window, you have no other option but to make the section full width, right? And the end result is the full width content that stretches side to side across the entire viewport. However, the actual goal is to let only one side of the section bleed to the viewport edge, not both of them. The opposite side should behave as if not affected by the full width, it should remain aligned to the content box start or the end. And this is where the fun part begins. In case you think that adding the padding to the non-bleeding side of the section might be solution, then you are wrong. If you try to do that, you'll never be able to follow the content box boundaries. You're gonna see why exactly in just a minute. I have created a section with a colored spacer widget inside that will be used as a visual guide, some sort of the reference, so you can see how the full width section below behaves at the different viewport sizes or whenever the browser window is resized. Now I'll quickly add some basic widgets to the left hand side column and the image background to the right one. The right hand side column is the bleeding one and the image background is supposed to be touching the viewport edge. The non-bleeding column should be aligned to the beginning of the content box, regardless the viewport size. Everything will be checkable against our reference section above. Just to mention that the bleeding column doesn't necessarily need to be the background image. You can put any widget inside that column, anything you find suitable. When I said that you'll never be able to follow the content box boundaries if you try to control the alignment of the non-bleeding column by using the padding, here's what I meant. Regardless the units been used, be it percentage or pixel, EM or REM, the non-bleeding column catches the content box left hand side edge only when the viewport size meets the equation so to speak, which in turn implies or proves that the method we are using is wrong. So we ain't gonna try to invent the tap water here, but rather follow the common sense. So instead of trying to manipulate the distance from the left hand side of the viewport edge, we have to find the equilibrium point and do all the simple math from there. It's quite obvious that the point we are looking for is the viewport center. The middle of the screen or the viewport remains unchanged regardless its size. It's always 50%, so that's gonna be our zero point. Now the very first thing I'm gonna do is to put both of my columns into the balance. After that, I'm going to show you how to disbalance columns or create the offset, but still maintain the balance. I know it might be hard to wrap your head around what I just said, but at the end you'll figure it's much easier to be done than said, ok? I promise. At the beginning I mentioned that you're going to need steroids for Elementor add-on, more precisely one of the extensions named Breaking Bad. That very extension allows me to tailor both section and columns easy way, without necessity of the custom CSS panel and the Elementor Pro. So the width of my non-bleeding column will be 570 pixels. Why exactly? Well simply because that's one half or 50% of 1140 pixels which is the default content width of the Elementor editor. And the width of my bleeding column should be 50%. After that all I have to do is to align both columns to the right inside my section. That's why I gotta highlight the section go to its own Breaking Bad settings and align columns to the end. If I try to resize viewport now, you can clearly tell that both of the columns are in a balance. I'm gonna do the preview in order to make more space and have a smoother resize response. So 
Basically, at this point, regardless of the viewport size, the bleeding column will always be stuck to the right hand side of the screen while the left one remains properly aligned to the content box. Let's see what happens in responsive mode. What if I switch to the tablet view? Well, as you can see, the layout falls apart, which is predictable if you consider the fact that the tablet view goes down to 768 pixels. In the same time, the sum of our two columns is around 950. I guess. So in order to reconcile pixels and percentages, so to speak, I'm not going to try to increase or decrease one, one's width on behalf of another because something like that will never ever work. It's like trying to put a dog and a cat sleep together in the same bed. Instead of that pointless attempt, I'll switch back responsive mode to desktop and I'm going to use the latest max width option of the breaking bed. And I'm gonna say that whenever these 570 pixels are too much to fit the available horizontal space, we're gonna switch to 50% of the available space, whatever the pixel value of these 50% corresponds to, okay? Uh, that was some sort of euphemism, it, wa it was not literal, but I did it on purpose to better depict the meaning of max width option in general, and I hope it makes sense. Okay, hence I did it for desktop devices. I can be safe that the setting is going to be inherited by all devices below, unless defined otherwise, of course. So if I go back to the tablet mode, or if I try to resize browser window, my 570 pixels wide column, my 570 pixels column width applies as long as there's enough space to hold it. Otherwise, it's gonna switch to 50%, as simple as that. That's why I'm gonna leave tablets mode custom width and max width empty. As for the mobile view, everything should be pretty much straightforward because both of the columns should be 100% wide. I mean, no way to keep them side by side unless I decrease the font size to something unreadable, which doesn't make much sense. And then of course, I just have to switch the column order because I want to keep the image column atop the text column. It kinda makes more sense from the user experience point of view. Alrighty. That's it. Everything I did so far is applicable in case you are about to keep both of the columns in the center of the 1140 pixels wide content box. But what if I want to create some sort of offset? For instance, what if I want to make my bleeding column 51% wide? Is that possible? The answer is no. Why not? Because something like that creates the impossible condition. It's off the center. Remember when I said that we have to find the equilibrium point? the point out of which all other calculations are done. Well, any tiny little percent on top of that point, on top of 50% or our zero point, no matter how small it is, screws up everything. If we want to make the bleeding column wider on the opposite side, we have to add up pixels instead of percentages. So how to do that? Well, it's quite simple indeed. First, I'm gonna duplicate the entire section, which saves a lot of time here. And now if I need to, ha need to have the bleeding column, let's say 100 pixels wider, I'll use the CSS calculate function and simply add up 100 pixels to the existing 50%. But if I do that, my non-bleeding column should be 100 pixels shorter, otherwise it won't fit. So all I gotta do is to deduct 100 pixels from the existing 570, which in total gives me 470 pixels. What happens to the max width value? Can I keep 50%? Of course not. I have to take those 100 pixels into account here as well. And once again, I'm gonna use CSS calculate function to deduct 100 pixels from it. That's why I'll type in calc 50% minus 100 pixels. So whatever you add up to, the, to your bleeding column, subtract from the non-bleeding one. That's the rule of thumb. Now we can check all out in a preview to be sure that everything fits in. Okay. And, and that's pretty much it. Maybe I just need to mention that the bleeding column realignment or the alignment to the opposite side of the viewport doesn't require any major modification. All you have to do is to drag the bleeding column to the opposite side of the parent section and then make the section columns align to the start instead of the end. 
As I said at the beginning, I have prepared a training file for you and the training file includes a few things that I did not demonstrate here in this tutorial. However, that might be considered as a surprise factor. Anyhow, feel free to comment, check out the video description for additional links, visit my Gumroad shop to find something for yourself, because this is how you help me keep this channel and my plugin alive. Other than that, peace and love, stay well.